One of the most profitable food business ideas to run in 2020 is a home-based food business, or as it's known, a cottage food business. In this video, I will give you all the information you need to know to get your food business, home-based bakery or candy business up and running in the state of Georgia, and we're going to get to it right now. All right, so in the state of Georgia, it can definitely be a profitable food business starting from home. And for the biggest reason is, well, it's from your home. <laughs> um, having a minimal investment right off the bat can be a huge incentive to start any small business. And when I started my retail bakery, of course, one of the biggest expenses was the rent. So when it comes to using your home as a small business, to begin with, it's absolutely genius. And the multitude of tax benefits also are enormous when you operate a home-based food business, but definitely check with your accountant about that. So let's get into exactly what is a cottage food business in the state of Georgia and what are you able to do and how do you get it started? What are the necessary requirements? So I'm going to give you a general uh, understanding of what you need to do. And then down in the description below the video, check in the description section, and I'm going to put a few links to the Georgia website that'll help you understand more particularly about what else is needed and what you can do. So Let's get into it and figure out exactly what you can and can't do. So in the state of Georgia, it's a little bit of a challenge at first because you do have to get a business license. You have an application and a home inspection as well. And you do have a course, that, a training course that you have to take. Um, and I believe it's a food handlers course. And we'll check that out in one second. I'll get into details about that. But those are the four main things that you definitely want to do. Now, I personally would recommend um, liability insurance for your, uh, your LLC or however you want to form your business. But after you get your business license, you definitely want to look into some food producers insurance. And if you're going to use your automobile uh, in any of this type of, of, of transition or if you're working for anything where you're, you're dropping off ingredients or picking stuff up for your business, check out a commercial auto insurance policy as well. That's going to be something that's going to be a huge asset for your business. Um, so where can you start? So I'm going to give you the six steps to do this. And the first one is going to be where can you sell? That's a great question. So once you create your product, in Georgia, you can do events like farmer's markets, roadside stands. You can sell online, but you have to actually do the transaction with the individual itself. So if you sell a product, you have to transact it. you got to give it directly to the end user. You can't do like as far as restaurants or wholesale or a third party who's going to resell the product itself. Um, that's something that's not allowed. So you definitely want to look into that. You can also do home sales where you produce the product, and if you're comfortable with strangers, I mean, obviously they are, but if you're comfortable with customers coming to your home, you can definitely have them come to your house and pick up a food product that you're producing there as well. Now, some of the prohibited or uh, venues and avenues that you can't sell to, like I just mentioned briefly, wholesale is not a type of business that you can do from home. You'd have to be in a commercial kitchen for that. Uh, restaurants and retail stores is also another avenue that can't be done from home just because it's going to be considered a third party until that restaurant or store sells it then to another customer. So there'll be three people involved in the transaction. That is not allowed. So next up, we have what types of food? Step two, what kind of food can you sell? Well, it's actually pretty big, the list, to be honest with you. And again, I want to refer to that link in our description for much more detailed. But here's a, a basic understanding. You can do cakes, um, sweet breads and scones, muffins and brownies, um, cook cookies, breads, um, candies like brittles, fudge, cotton candy, truffles, chocolates, um, actually even condiments like vinegars. Uh, dry goods like mixes, dried fruits, herbs, cereals, uh, dried vegetables, and even spices. And as I mentioned in a lot of my other videos about cottage food businesses, um, spice businesses are hugely profitable because of the fact that the ingredients are so cheap. So starting something like that from home is a huge, huge thing you should think about. If you're not even in spices and you wanted to get into a spice business, it's definitely one to do from home. Um, you can also do pies and pastries, but keep in mind when you do pies and pastries that they can't be refrigerated or considered potentially hazardous food products. So if they're time or temperature sensitive, it's definitely a product that you can't do from home. But there's a huge variety of other pastries and pies and things of that sort that you can do and definitely sell them locally. <laughs> Jams and jellies and preserves, snacks like caramel corn, uh, granola, popcorn balls, uh, nuts and seeds, crackers and pretzels and chocolate covered items, those are also allowed as well. Now, as far as the limitations, 
let's take a look at some of the restrictions. Okay, so step three was going to be the restrictions and limitations that you can't. There's a great thing about the sales. There is no sales limit, which is fantastic. So you can really, really leverage your home and create a really full-blown business with no sales limit on the amount of money that you can sell. Now, you can't use, though, when it comes to your kitchen, you can't have pets or anything of that sort. Uh, they're kind of restricted when it comes to having them in that area. So when you're working for your cottage food business, producing products, make sure there's no pets. No other what they call domestic activity. And also known as interstate sales. Those are prohibited. And what that means is um, selling a product from your state to another. And again, that would be almost something that would be online, which again is prohibited, but you, you can't actually transact outside of your state. And if you're working in a home-based kitchen, it has to be uh, non-commercial equipment. You can't necessarily have a 300-pound bread mixer or a dough mixer in the middle of your kitchen. That's something that's not allowed. You would have to get into a commercial space to do that. Now, Let's go on to the legalities. Like I mentioned in the beginning, the business legalities, what is it as far as business licensing thing? You have to definitely have one of those. The uh, operator must apply for a business license um, in specifically the county that you are in, the county's permits department. And normally it's between about $50 to $100 for those types of permits, but you definitely need to have a business license. Now, the two things that are really super important are the next two. If you're off of a well, if you're dealing with uh, on your property, you're dealing with water that comes into your house from a well, the well has to be tested. OK, so if you have a private what's known as a private water source, if you have that, you're going to definitely need to have that tested. And if you're on a private sewer system, that has to be inspected as well. Why is that important? Well, here here's why. Because when you are dealing with equipment that you're washing and cleaning and sanitizing in your kitchen home and you're producing food for the public, the, the local offices, the local departments, when county departments want to make sure that that water is not tainted, that the water is clean enough for you to be cleaning utensils, pots and pans that are going to be used to create food product for people to consume. So they want everybody to be safe. OK, and that even includes your, your sewer water, your sewer as well, if you're on a private sewer. Now, the next thing you have to do is you have to get a ANSI accredited food safety course, something that is similar to like the serve safe. Uh, which is actually an online courses and they're running about 125 bucks. And those are courses that will teach you everything about food sanitation, how to handle food, how to package it, prepare it and hold it and all of that good stuff. Um, so next up would be your cottage food license. So in the state of Georgia, when you get that cottage food license, the license itself is around a hundred dollars. If you actually incorporate yourself and you get the license after June 30th, the fee is around 50. It's about half that. It's about $50 for the, for the rest of the year. But it's something that has to be renewed annually. Okay. So keep that in mind too. Next up is your home inspection. So now once you get this set to go and you get the, before you get to license, you need to contact the Department of Agriculture and they will set up an appointment to actually have a cottage food inspection of your kitchen and the area that you're going to prepare the food. So do keep that in, in mind as well. Now, next up, what about food insurance? Yes, as I was speaking earlier, step five is going to be food business insurance. Now, not every state requires you to have insurance policy for your food business from home, but I highly recommend in order for you to be financially safe, uh, safer than sorry, to be honest with you, you need to have some type of food business producers insurance. Now, there are programs like the flipprogram.com that actually sells um, uh, home-based food policies and you can actually truck. get a food policy so we're going to dive into what you business. can and can't do Check and then give you some tips on how to find uh, out give you a quote how your city is about five hundred dollars a year can really dictate uh, which is not bad exactly how, how definitely and where you be safe can prepare your food so get yourself some insurance for that truck now really quick i'm going to jump so into lastly the is number six how do you label what exactly is a, a commercial food product kitchen or if it's commissary not kitchen producing uh, because kitchen, i know many of you may be not watching this and you've shelf. Never heard is of a different type of label before yes maybe it is. never worked in one uh number so one allergens so basically to make a sure that you've got or a commercial the allergens kitchen on your is label. a separate the major allergen outside of your home have to be on outside of your business address and it's a where you're actually producing the product needs to be on the label as well it's inspected by now once you create a name for your business you got to have that name it is a fully set up kitchen commercial kitchen where you've got no 
brainer. All the equipment from Obviously, stove you're producing to food refrigerators product, you gotta to make freezers, sure people walk know coolers, what is inside of it, what are the uh, ingredients. Storage area the and, net and all, weight. Of that, all the um, so, equipment that you would need inside of a traditional If you're selling a product kitchen, by weight, it so has you would actually weight on it. That is, you would the weight of the product minus that any package transport that you have. Truck, okay. And then so from you there, make sure you the put net those weight ingredients that together to create your is menu on, on your food truck. Now the product now, name. The so question that we had Sarah's was chocolate um, chips. a young lady who chocolate was chip asking cookies, actually well, about put Sarah's whether or not she cookies, needed to right? or could prepare her food And then food lastly, from you want to have a statement that says basically your product is well, produced in an uninspected This is going to be dictated um, kitchen. It's a home city in the county. You want to make sure that that has it's kind of a disclaimer if you will. So let every state know that it's not produced and to make it even more challenging is actually every city and county writes their own ordinances commercial and rules about it is this. produced in so a home base. In some cases, kitchen. commercial food so truck These are some really great basic uh, outlines of what you can and can't do and get yourself up and running. For more information, definitely click on those um, links. They are not allowed below. to prepare food and actually. And if this on video was helpful, do give a thumbs up. I appreciate it. Preparing and I will see you guys on the next video. And slicing Thank and cutting and getting all that pro all the ingredients together. Um, so if you're looking to start your own food business, check out these required. videos for it's more resources. Profitable not. food business ideas. Um, other cities in how to start a food truck business. Uh, can use it as an option. Learn all about cottage food, food, food laws. Commercial to create a home business um, for or selling even food. Your food truck itself. And, and how to start a catering business from that. home. So you do have to do these and many more small food business ideas are all at your fingertips when you subscribe to Marketing Food Online.